Geeks. Welcome to another video. So today we will be discussing the chemical synthesis of oligonucleotides by the phosphoramidite method. So firstly, you need to understand a few terms. What is an oligonucleotide? Oligo means few. So these are basically short stretches of single stranded DNA or RNA molecules. What is a nucleoside? It is sugar plus nitrogenous base. Nucleotide, it is nucleoside plus a phosphate. Finally, you need to know the nitrogenous bases. So we have adenine, guanine, cytosine and thymine. Now one thing that you need to observe in all the three structures, the first three is each of them has an exocyclic amine group which is lacked in thymine. So thymine just has an NH group whereas the rest of them have an NH2 group. Hold on to this piece of information, you will require it further. Now this is how a typical nucleotide looks. Here is the structure of ATP that is adenosine triphosphate. So we basically have the ribose sugar, the nitrogenous base and the triphosphate. These are the building blocks of your DNA. Now in our body, any side reaction is prevented. But when we do chemical synthesis, these strong nucleophiles like nitrogen, oxygen, they call for some extra side reactions. So while preparing oligonucleotides chemically, first step we need to do is we need to block these or add some protect protecting group. So after doing that, what we get is the phosphoramidite molecule. So to understand this, let us see starting from this sugar. So here in the sugar ribose, we have five carbons starting from here. So first carbon, second carbon, third carbon, fourth carbon, fifth carbon. As you know, the first position always contains the nitrogenous base. Now in the nitrogenous base, since we had the NH2 group, we need to protect that group since nitrogen would otherwise act as a nucleophile. So it, the protection is done by adding this group called as the benzoyl group. So except thymine, a benzoyl group is added to the nitrogenous basis. Then come down to the third position. Now this is the position where one nucleotide is joined to the other by a 3 prime to 5 prime phosphodiester bond. So we need to protect this phosphate group as well. That is done by two groups. First one that you can see at the bottom is the diisopropyl amine group. So di meaning there are two of these similar structures and iso is this L-shaped linkage. So this is diisopropyl amine followed by another group called as 2-cyanoethane. At the 5 prime position where the phosphates would attach, we have a group called as DMT that is dimethoxytrital. Okay, so at the 5 prime DMT, 3 prime diisopropylamine and cyanoethane and to the nitrogenous basis, the benzyl group. All of these together make our phosphoramidite molecule. So this is basically the equivalent of our ATP, GTP, CTP, TTP that we use in the body. Next, we have to go to who discovered this method. So it was given by Sir Bruce Merrifield for which he received a Nobel Prize in 1984. Now, what are the major steps in the synthesis? I have just outlined it for the sake of clarity. So there are four major steps. First one is detritilation, the bulky group that I showed you. We have to remove that. Followed by coupling, that is joining the two nucleotides, oxidation and capping. What are the use and what is each step we are going to learn in detail. So firstly, you have to link the nucleotide to the column. Now the method we are going to study is called a solid phase oligonucleotide synthesis. And why the name solid? Because our nucleotides are attached to a solid support. Now these supports are of two types, CPG that is controlled pore glass or also polystyrene. Controlled pore glass are basically rigid and non-swelling beads having pores. Through these pores, all your reagents and nucleotides would be added. It is preferred for only nucleotides lower than 40 because higher size oligonucleotides would block the pores. 
Next is polystyrene. It is a highly cross-linked structure that has good moisture and uh, moisture retaining properties and exclusion properties. But the drawback is you can use it only on a small scale. So this is our CPGB. This is the first nucleotide. Now the first nucleotide is attached to the B via a spacer molecule. The first nucleotide needs to be protected using DMT or else there will be un unwanted reactions at this point. After adding the first nucleotide, the second step is retritulation. Why? Because the first nucleotide that you added to the support needs to be coupled to the next. And for coupling, we need this site empty. So for that reason, the step is detritilation, that is removal of this DMT group. How can we do it? By using TCA trichloroacetate. After TCA, the TMT group is replaced by this H plus and now you have a ready nucleotide. After this process, we need to remove any excess TCA. So we use the reagent acetonitrile and after a wash of acetonitrile, we flush the column with argon gas. This is in order to remove any residual acetonitrile. The third step is activation and coupling. So once you removed your OH DMT group and made the nucleotide free, you get this structure. Now to add something on this, we need to introduce our second nucleotide. And this right here is the phosphorimidite molecule. As you remember, we have the DMT, we have two protecting groups right here. Okay, so this is the second base. It is indicated by writing a base 2 here. Now we have to activate this so that it reacts. So for activation, we use the molecule tetrazole. What tetrazole does is it provides this nitrogen with the H+. Since nitrogen has a lone pair, it donates it to, it shares it with this hydrogen and forms a bond. This is the activation step. Next, the coupling. This becomes a very good leaving group. So this group right here leaves. And what we have is this OPOME. This right here gets attached to the hydroxy group of your first. So this is our first nucleotide that we had attached to the bead. Now this right here would, this CH2OH, this hydrogen would react with this and you will get this bond that has been formed. After formation of the bond, the next step is capping. Now, why do I have to cap and what are we going to cap? So basically, after doing the first step, that is you added the first nucleotide to the support and you added another incoming nucleotide. But now there is a chance that the second nucleotide or the second base you added didn't actually get attached to this. Maybe there are still some molecules linked on the column that have not undergone the activation and coupling step. So what we need to do is the unreacted OH groups need to be capped or blocked. And that's done by treating it with acetic, acetic anhydride. So the hydrogen over here goes with the CS3C double bond O, OH and forms acetic acid. And what you get is this acetyl cap, that is CS3C double bond O. Now this nucleotide will no more react further. But you must have had the question, why do I even need to cap it? So the answer is, if I don't cap, what would happen is there would be a space that is left. So suppose, let us imagine that you had your first nucleotide right here, the first nucleotide. You added the second nucleotide. Now, second nucleotide bound on this spot, but was unable to bind here. It didn't bind over here. Now, you add the next nucleotide, third one. Here, it will normally stick. So, one, two, three. But since the previous nucleotide didn't attach to this position, this is vacant. So, the third nucleotide would get added over here. Now, what you have done? You have basically caused a deletion mutation unknowingly you have deleted one nucleotide and that is going to lend, cause a disruption in the C, in the main coding of your oligonucleotide and it's going to be a waste. So hence we need to cap. Followed by the capping, 
this right here this linkage can you see it's a triester linkage which is highly unstable because phosphorus as we know is pentavalent so to convert this unstable linkage into a stable linkage what we need to do is we need to oxidize it and this oxidation is carried out by using two reagents that is iodine and pyridine so oxidation in presence of iodine and pyridine will give this structure so see this triester has got converted into a pentavalent molecule which is now very stable now you can keep continuing this process to finally get the long chain oligonucleotide so how did we start we linked the nucleotide to the support after linking we need to flush it with acetone followed by argon then detrithylation which is done by treating it with tca followed by again washing with acetonitrile and then argon activation by adding tetrazole coupling follows the next and then cap if any extra nucleotide didn't bind that is done by using acetic anhydride and dimethyl amino pyridine oxidation done by iodine and pyridine and finally repeat so once you are done making your nucleotide you need to cleave cause cleavage and deprotection cleavage meaning remove it from the support the first nucleotide was added to the support so that has to be removed and we have to remove all the protecting groups so the last molecule that you had will still have dmt you need to remove those now why do we need to make all these oligonucleotides so first of all oligonucleotides are required for site directed mutagenesis that is adding mutations at known positions for cloning dna sequencing and sequencing gene libraries so it has a wide application in biology next what are the advantages of using this method it is easily automated process all the additions are done by a machine excess reagents are used so the reaction is driven to completion quite fast impurities and excess reagents are washed away therefore you don't need to do any purification after each step and it is very economical but there are some disadvantages that is when you want to make higher oligonucleotides the yield goes on decreasing so higher the length of the nucleotide more will be the decrease in yield and finally it is very difficult to monitor the efficiency that is how efficiently each step is carrying out how efficiently bases have been added that the real time monitoring is difficult these are my references i hope you found this video informative if you did so please subscribe to my channel and share it with your friends bye